What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, shrinksandsneakers.com. So happy new year and welcome to another installment of our video series. Today I'm gonna to cover a topic that I've avoided covering for good reason. And that is because everyone's talking about it. And what is it? It's COVID-19. And specifically I'm gonna talk about fluvoxamine in the treatment of COVID-19. Can fluvoxamine, this antidepressant that I've made previous videos about for you guys, where I've said I don't personally like using it very much, but may it be a utility here in treating COVID-19 infections. So it wouldn't be appropriate for me to cover this video without telling you a little bit about the coronavirus and COVID-19 and why it leads to serious illness and where do we think that fluvoxamine may intervene. So COVID-19 may lead to serious illness as a result of what we call an excessive immune response. And this is termed in layman's terms, a cytokine storm. So fluvoxamine is an older antidepressant medication. It's been around for a long time, has a lot of evidence, and has a lot of literature research surrounding it. Now fluvoxamine may help prevent the clinical deterioration of patients with COVID-19 by stimulating sigma-1 receptors which regulate cytokine production. So I feel like before I move on from this topic of cytokines, I haven't really explained what is it and why are we talking about it. So cytokines are an essential part of the inflammatory process or infl inflammatory response to infection. They're produced by immune cells, including our innate immune system, which consists of macrophages and dendritic cells, natural killer cells, but also the adaptive immune system as well, which consists of T and B lymphocytes. So a cytokine storm is triggered by an infection, such as COVID-19, and it results in the immune cells producing too many inflammatory signals too fast. So too many inflammatory signals too fast results in inflammation and then could even result in organ damage and failure. So the reason why COVID-19 is a problem is because it can create this cytokine storm. And the reason we think fluvoxamine might be helpful is because it binds to these sigma-1 receptors, which regulate cytokine production. So let's take a look at what a randomized controlled trial that was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association found about the utility of fluvoxamine to decrease the severity of disease in COVID-19 cases. So what they did was they took participants in this study and they placed them in either one or two groups. One group would receive 100 milligrams three times a day of fluvoxamine, and the other would receive placebo for 15 days total. Now, the primary outcome that they measured was clinical deterioration within the 15 days, meeting criteria for one of the following things. One, shortness of breath or hospitalization for shortness of breath or pneumonia. Two, an oxygen saturation less than 92% on room air, or the need for supplemental oxygen, so meaning like a nasal cannula of some sort to provide oxygenation to achieve a saturation of 92% or greater. So they had like kind of a technical definition here, but basically people who had severe shortness of breath that either led to hospitalization or the development of pneumonia, and to oxygen saturation less than 92%, or the need for supplemental oxygen to achieve a 92% saturation. So what do we want to know? We want to know what the results showed. The results showed that clinical deterioration occurred in zero of the 80 patients who were in the fluvoxamine group. So those that received the 100 milligrams three times a day of fluvoxamine had zero clinical deterioration. So nobody had clinical deterioration in that group. Now, six of the 72 patients in the placebo group had clinical deterioration. So you might be saying, okay, well, that's not that big of a number. And you're right, it's not that big of a number, but it's different in the two groups. And what you wanna see is whether or not this was uh, obviously statistically significant and beneficial in terms of treatment. So ultimately, what is the whole point of this? What is the conclusion? Well, the authors concluded that the outpatients with symptomatic COVID-19 treated with fluvoxamine compared to placebo had a lower likelihood of clinical deterioration over 15 days, and that was sorted out in their data. However, they pointed out that there are limitations here, and the limitations include things like small sample size, right? There was only 
80 patients in the Luvox group and 72 in the placebo group, so a small sample size. And short duration of follow-up, this is only 15 days, so that's also a limitation here. Um, ultimately, the mechanism of immune modulation is believed to be the way that Luvox or fluvoxamine works here. So I kind of alluded to it at the beginning that sigma-1 agonism, so stimulating sigma-1 receptors, which Luvox is known to do with high affinity, can actually regulate cytokine production at the cellular level through an interaction with the endoplasmic reticulum stress sensor 1A. So at the cellular level, this is basically, you can think about this as Luvox is putting the brakes on cytokine production. So Luvox stimulates this sigma-1 receptor, it puts the brakes on these this cytokine production, which of course is the reason why people have clinical deterioration and problems with COVID-19 because of this cytokine storm that results in possible end organ damage. So fluvoxamine has previously been looked at too in the for its use in sepsis cases. So in sepsis cases that end up in the ICU, people have looked at fluvoxamine as a possible as a possible intervention because of this same mechanism of action. Now, do I think this is ready for mainstream? Do I think that everybody who comes in with symptomatic COVID should automatically be placed on fluvoxamine? Definitely not. But there might be utility. Say you're a consultation psychiatrist and you see a case where the person is COVID-19 positive, symptomatic, and they have depression or developed depression during the hospitalization, and you believe that they are appropriate for antidepressant treatment, you may want to consider fluvoxamine in that case because of this additional benefit of sigma-1 agonism and reducing the potential for cytokine storm. The, the potential disadvantages are ones I've already talked about and covered in previous videos, and that is drug interactions, specifically via inhibition of CYP450, 1A2, and 2C19. The potential advantages include relative safety of fluvoxamine, it's a relatively safe medication with a long history, it's also widespread availability, low cost, and oral administration, so ease of administration. I'm going to stop the video there. If you guys have questions or comments regarding fluvoxamine use in COVID-19, I'd be happy to answer them. And I think we are seeing more of this. I've seen it a few times in my own hospital, and I think we'll continue to see its use during this pandemic.